We just made these two easy farmhouse signs in under an hour using our Cricut, and we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do a builder to make it? So do we, and we have a new video each week. And this week, we're going back to the basics with the Cricut. My mom called me this week and said, Gary, I got one of those Cricut machines. You gotta make a video. So that's what we're doing this week, making a basic Cricut <laughs> video. She, just so you know, his mom does not sound like that at all, at all. And when she sees this video, she's going to kill him. <laughs> well, that's what it sounds like in my head. So that's what we're going with. Well, because this is that time of year, it's the beginning of the year, we know a lot of you have gotten some new toys. We have some new crafters out there. So we thought we'd start with a new crafting video for Garrett's mom, yes. <laughs> and for those of you that are new to Cricut as well, this is the how to make a farmhouse sign with your Cricut. Uh, we're gonna show you how to make a basic stencil. So we're gonna take a quick field trip and get some supplies and use a uh, what pre-engineered basic farmhouse frame pre-made and then we will add our stencil to it show you some quick stenciling tips and you'll you've be got, a pro in no time yeah you'll have some great accents for your home in no time step one we're gonna gather all of our supplies <laughs> of course we needed a cricket cricket and we have some country chic paints because we're going to do some painting. But we have to take a field trip to get everything else. So it's all to our local craft supply company. Field trip. So. All right, here's my advice for any new crafter. If you've got, if you've gotten yourself a cricket for Christmas, Number one, number one gift or accessory to go with it is this tool set. You cannot live without this tool set. These little scissors, super sharp, super great. And a long mat. And, and yeah, mat. there you go. That's what I was going to say. And a 24 inch mat. You got to have a 24 inch mat because you're making t shirts and you're making farmhouse signs. There's a ton of different kinds of vinyls. Today we're going to be making a stencil. And I'm going to use this stencil vinyl here. And you can use the Cricut brand or your generic brand at your store. Caesar or Hobby Lobby, Paper Studio, they all work. Now we need the sign backer. Your local craft store will have lots of different options. This is a pallet sign. This was a frame sign. And I think for this project, I would like to use this one. It looks like a cabinet door. Yeah, it looks like a cabinet. Step two. We're going to make all of our cuts. <laughs> it's really just cutting out our design using this stencil vinyl. So before we do that, we need to measure our work surface here. So grab our little tape measure here. So I know how big to make our stencil. So for this one, we're doing 19 and a half by seven and three quarters. And for this one, like 17, 17 and a half. Like All right, 10 and a half. And a half. All right. Yeah. So now we know what size to make our designs. Let's head over to Design Space and we'll show you how to create our stencils. <laughs> okay, now that we have the size of our farmhouse sign, we'll move over here to Cricut Design Space. This is the welcome screen. And you can see here, here are all of my previous projects. We're gonna go up here and select new project. And this brings us to a blank canvas. And from here, we're going to add a text box and write the word home. And click on home. And then I'm going to change my font. And we're going to use the Harlington font. I select that and here I'm going to go ahead and resize this so my word home is going to fit uh, on my my board size is seven and three quarters by 19 and a half so I'm going to go ahead and make the height seven and a half there we go 
And if this is too hard to work with, you can always hit this size over here, bring this down to 75%. Now you see when I create this word, because this is a cursive font, sometimes the letters don't come in attached. So what you'll want to do is you can start with decreasing the letter spacing. And when I do that right here, you can see that the O now connects to the H, but the M and E aren't connected. If I keep decreasing it, they will eventually connect, but now the H overlaps the O. So what do we do about that? We're going to go ahead and bring that O back where we want it to be. That looks good. And we're going to click under advanced here. We're going to say ungroup to letters. And now each letter is independent of the word. So I can slide, I click the left mouse button, hold it and slide the M over. Click the left mouse button, hold it, slide the E over. And now they look like they're attached, but they're actually for indiv individual letters. So if you click make it, you'll see here, it's going to try and cut for individual letters. So here we're going to select the whole word, select all. And down here, we're going to choose weld. By welding this word together, now it becomes one item and it will cut as one item. Now when I select, select make it, you can see here that it automatically keeps it together as one word, it has auto sized it onto the mat, and now it has changed our mat size to a 24 inch mat. And that's because if I go back over here and we select our word, we're at 12.25 essentially um, inches long. So that's too wide for a standard 12 by 12 mat. The standard cutting area of a 12 by 12 mat is 11 and a half inches. So this is automatically going to rotate it to fit on a 12 by 24 mat. So that looks good. We're also going to add some additional text here. It's good to be. There we go. So that text box, I'm going to put that work with that over here. That's also in the Carlington font, but we're going to change that font to the typewriter font. Typewriter standard, I'm going to click on it. There we go. And here we can move that to right here. So let's see how this looks. Let's select all. That looks pretty good. That puts our length at 15.148 inches, which is shorter than the 19 and a half we had to work with. And our height is still seven and a half inches. So I think we can go with that. Now I'm going to go ahead and weld all of this together so it cuts just as we're seeing it. If I hit make it, now we're welded together as one image. It's good to be home. It's telling me up here that because it's longer than 11 and a half inches, it's auto selected a larger mat for us, the 24 inch mat. So we can just say, okay, hit continue. It's looking for my cricket. All right, here I'm going to go ahead and select our stencil button. Stencil button, say done. It's telling me to load my fine point blade. It'll auto tell, detect which blade you need for the materials. The uh, fine point blade is the blade that comes with the Cricut, so you don't have to make a change there. I'm going to load my map and hit the flashing go button. to weed our stencil. We're just going to use our little picker tool here 
and pull up the vinyl that we want to put paint on. So the, the section of the stencil that we where we want to add paint. So here I'm filling up the word home. Here you want to hold down those pieces you want to stay. Give it a little extra support. Next step is to add transfer tape. We do a lot of stencils, so we buy our transfer tape in bulk. It is just a clear plastic tape that's going to go over to help you transfer. So I'm going to measure mine out. Give it a quick cut. And from here, we're gonna peel off the paper backing. And I can add the transfer tape right over my stencil. In this case, I'm just going to add the stencil right on top of the transfer tape. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down. It's too, too wide to work with. Easy to just cut it right down. There we go, ready to be transferred. Step three. Now we paint. <laughs> I hit the ceiling. Well, I don't have to paint. I was smart. I got a pre-painted board from yes. the craft store. Yes, and if you recall, I decided at the last minute, or I don't even know if I was on camera when I chose at the last second to, yeah. to get this one. This one looks like a cabinet door, yeah. and I think it's really cool looking. Oh, I was, let me make sure I've got the right way. And I think I'm going to be adventurous with our paint scheme for this one. Adventurous. Yeah. Well, normally, I mean, I love this whitewash look with the wood frame, and we do that a lot. So this time, I'm going to mix it up, and I'm going to paint my board in this, and I haven't used this color yet, this beautiful navy blue. It's called Peacoat. Peacoat. Uh-huh. So oh, I'm gonna... that's funny. Navy blue, Peacoat. Oh, oh, I get it. I get it. That's funny. So, oh, looks like I have opened it, but I know I've never used it. I think I've used it. I was oh. adventurous one day. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and paint my board. He's ready to I'm go. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take a break. Yeah, that's the great thing about if you're a newbie, you don't have to go in and make something from complete scratch, which we've got lots of videos to show you how to do that. Uh, you can start with a beginner sign just like this. It makes it super simple for my first farmhouse sign. Yeah, this is like a beginner class here. This is not an advanced level tutorial. No, anybody can do my version. Definitely anybody can do this version. It's half DIY. Yeah, DIY. Whoa, whoa. I need to... Be more aggressive while you're paying? Well, no, I've got to flip it over and do the back, but oh. I'm going to have to do that once this dries. Nothing that will keep gun will kill it. Pun there's intended. A, there's a quick tip for you. Heat gun always speeds up this drying process. <laughs> I thought I was getting away without painting. <laughs> I'm not. Here's the great thing about this country chic paint. One coat. <laughs> well, yes. Yes, that's what I was basically going to say is you can't get it wrong. I mean, you should see. I hope that we can show you up close. It dries super flat looking. There's no real brush marks. And uh, one coat. One coat. And if you've watched any of our previous videos, you know that I hate to paint. That is Garrett's motto. Can you hold that little tag again? And I'm going to hit it with the heat gun. <laughs> Do 
not burn your partner's face off. It's very, it's very focused on what I was doing. That's like that. Some desert heat. It's happening here. It does get hot. Now my lips are dried out. Step four. And now we're gonna put the design on the board. We're just gonna take our stencil, peel the backing off, and lay it where we want it. Yes, but before we do, I need to show you how beautiful that blue is. Can you see it? I love this peacoat. 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 Roscoe peacoat trade. No. No. All right, there are three parts to this stencil. There is the clear transfer tape, which we added to the top. There is the blue vinyl stencil film, which we cut. And then there's this paper backing. Now we gotta peel the paper backing off. Keep it tight, keep it tight. Yes, our number Pull one, back. number one tip with this is to peel this back at what 180 degrees yeah. basically back on top yeah. of itself go slow if it peels up your stencil just lay it back down with the paper and keep pulling nice and slow I'm missing a piece of my, my sweet. I don't know, is that the W piece? I'll put this back. Oops, I need a tool. Here's your little picker tool. To put it, nope, nope, it's, it's not gonna slide. It's not gonna slide. Hold on, hold on. Stick. And stick. And we're back in business. Yes, Ooh. my number one tip with this is be patient. All right, line it up and lay it down. Yes, yeah, so now we have our top transfer tape and we have our vinyl that we've cut. Sticky side goes down. Sometimes you have to eyeball this thing. Before I lay it down all the way, I'm gonna just check my measurements over here. I'm not, I'm not checking my measurements. All right, I got two and three quarters. I got like two fingers over here. Two fingers right there. I got two, that's not bad. All right. All right, I'm laying mine down. Mine's in. Show them your little tool. These come Got my the... little scraper tool, my little squeegee. I'm gonna squeegee it down nice and tight. I have another version, but same kind of thing. All right, now we're just gonna peel up the transfer tape again. Lay it back against itself like a 180. Yes, just like you pulled the paper back, you're gonna now take the clear transfer tape and you're gonna peel that off. Again, keep it, see how we just lay ours flat? Just keep it nice and taut and pull it straight back. Straight back. Oh, we're going towards each other, babe. We're gonna rendezvous in the middle. Whew, sorry, I gotcha. Yeah, you got a little carried away over there. I was trying to do a quick swipe up and out of the way. Whoop. Lost the knee. Lost the knee. Look at that. Pretty nice, huh? Looking snazzy. I might just leave it like that. Looking yes. pretty cool. His is sealed down nice and tight, but I have this chalky paint, so my seal isn't quite as tight as his. So now I'm going to just go back over it very gently with this scraper tool just to make sure I've got a good seal. I'm 
around each letter. I'm mostly concerned, I'm not worried about up here, I'm just concerned about adhesion around where we're going to paint. Yeah, around the letters. Next step is to paint our stencil, but before we add paint, our number one tip. What is it, Garrett? Mod Podge. <laughs> what do we got here? Matt, top tip. We get a lot of complaints, or we get a lot of questions about how do we get it to a not bleed Mod Podge. Super tip, Matt. Sometimes that gloss will stick together so well that when you pull your stencil up, the paint will come with it. And you don't want that. But you do want to add that coat of Mod Podge to seal the edges the mat seems to not pull up the paint after the fact. You just want a little, little thin layer, just creating a little barrier around the edge of the stencil. You're just gonna, yeah, we'll just share that brush. Ready to paint it now? Yep. Is yours dry? It's dry. Mine's a little tacky. You can hear it. I'm going in with the paint. I'm coming in with that pea coat. I like it. I like what it looks like there, so I'm gonna oh, put it on mine. Are you? Yeah. Switching it up. Need help? Yes, please. That is. We use this paint a lot. And oh, it's that clay, so it kind of makes a pottery around the top. <laughs> All right, we're using our country. I'm using the country chic paint in crinoline. And I am I'm back in with the pea coat. This is the easiest way to paint. Makeup sponges. Just give them a little coat of makeup, a little coat of paint makeup. This keeps it on thin so it doesn't bleed under your stencil, even though you've got the Mod Podge. You still want to do everything you can to make sure it doesn't bleed. So you dab it. You can use a foam brush too. Yeah, the foam brush is okay, but it seems to hold a lot more paint. You have to push harder to get it out. This is great because it just kind of dabs. Alright. So, this isn't 100% dry yet. I would suggest you don't let it dry 100%. So, while it's still a little damp, it looks pretty dry. I'm going to go ahead and start peeling out my stencil. You want to be a little careful because you don't want the stencil to end up on your wood and getting paint on your wood. So that pulled up nice and easy. We're going to use our picker tool to pull the insides of our letters out. Pro tip for pulling a stencil is you don't want to come in the inside of the letter. You don't want to pull from the edge of the inside of your O or whatever letter it might be. You want to kind of put the poker kind of in the middle and pull up. Because if you come in from the edge, it'll scratch your paint and you don't want that. You're going to be so impressed. Look at these stencils. Bam, look at that. Look at those crisp lines. Now how easy was that? No bleeding. Love it. Let me see those crisp lines. So crisp, so clean. My lips are still dried out from the heat gun. <laughs> Under an hour, a look at professional. You feeling professional? You should. You pull this off, you'd be looking professional. Yeah, these things look great. You can sell these at the farmer's market any day. If you've watched some of our other videos, <laughs> you know we're big farmer mar farmer's market fans. I was going to say, if you're loving this blue paint as much as we are, this beautiful pea coat. This popping pea coat. Yes, we're going to need like 10 more uses for this color blue. I love it. I want a you piece of furniture in that blue, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. We did a blue table, but I think Not we could blue, do... Did we? I don't think it was this blue. Mm. 
you can get yourself this poppin pea coat it's really just called pea coat yeah. don't look for popping in front of it <laughs> from countrychicpaints.com you can use our coupon code make it 10 for 10 percent off your first order it's about that time we got to go get ourselves some black eyed peas it's new year's day that's what we do <laughs> and uh we will see you next week where we'll do it build it make it again Oh, at the same time. Can you do yours? Oh gosh. Can you balance yours? I'll balance mine. And we'll switch. Ow! Oh. <laughs> Two seconds is about all I had there. <laughs> I can't do it like you can. Okay, here it comes. <laughs> <laughs>